it's such a pleasure to be here and um, I'm honored to really moderate this panel about creators because I think um, that's kind of like we, we are trying to create something that is um, different, is innovative and is challenging as well, especially when you are using new technologies. So I would like to give uh, maybe each panelist uh, a chance to introduce yourself and then we can go straight into why Cardano and share some of your experience. Um, hello everyone, my name is Bart. Uh, please like bear in mind, I joined Directed about uh, two months ago. <laughs> and <laughs> so I don't know that much details about um, all the intricacies going on. But um, Directed is a, a non-profit foundation focusing on uh, giving coding boot camps to talented kids in Kenya and Ethiopia. And the, I can quickly maybe add that the reason we're using Cardano for that is because we can avoid all the intermediaries, which are usually very corrupt in those countries, and give the um, stipends and scholarships to the students directly. Hello. I'm Nino, I'm a music producer that releases my music as music NFTs or digital collectibles on Cardano. Uh, I've been there since 2019, 2021, and uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Patrick, I'm a Cardano ambassador. Um, I create content in the form of written interviews with NFT projects, with uh, DeFi projects, SPOs as well. I've got some friends here that uh, I've interviewed. Hopefully we're going to have an interview soon with Nido. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to share most I mean, I'm learning through the process by interviewing these people, but I also want to share with other, you know, interested parties. So, yeah, that's me. Hi, I'm, um, I'm Barney. Um, I'm the founder of um, LadSwag, which is uh, an NFT program um, supporting veterans originally, as was the utility that we were, we were, we were working on. Um, and I've, I've raised 6,000 um, ADA already, so we're doing really well on that front. Uh, we've been, I've been in it for about a year and a half now, and I was here at the, the last uh, Carlano Summit um, with rabbit with headlights uh, and walking around and getting very scared and get, trying to get involved. But um, I absolutely love the, the space, love Cardano and, and, and everything else. But um, yeah, and, and the next utility that we're working on is a game. So you can see over there that we're, we're building a demo and are moving down into, into that route. But hopefully get to speak about it a bit more. And then I found myself, okay, what do I do now? And I went into what I call crypto, cyber, and AI. So these are my projects. So um, cyber is about digital identity. So it's very close to crypto already. Uh, crypto, uh, mostly NFTs, crypto related. And then AI is mostly about open source AIs. So these are my projects. Wow, wow. Well. <laughs> So I think we have a very diverse panel because we have got some people that are actually creating content like Patrick, some people that are creating music, somebody that are creating games. So that's quite interesting. And uh, I know it's challenging because I'm, I have a podcast as well and uh, it's uh, not easy to create content. And it's not easy to create content that entertain and is like and basically your audience like. So it's a very challenging space. And then you have to think about the aspect of actually making money, right? So monetizing your content. And that's where I want to come because, um, you know, there is a reason why you choose Cardano. There are many other platforms out there that you can work with, work on. And, uh, you know, some uh, maybe could be better than others, but Cardano has got its strengths. So, if, it would be great if each of you can say why you have decided to join the Cardano community. Um, so the reason Directed is based on Cardano, there, there are three sort of pillars to it, or like three main reasons. Um, the first one is the um, academic part of Cardano. So um, I believe that, or we believe that, uh, it's actually very important to have this um, sort of vast amount of research done and academic um, sort of backing to what's going on. That makes the Cardano project a lot more serious in the eyes of the outside world, the, not the web-free world, uh, which is very uh, helpful. 
Uh, the second thing is um, the focus on the de decentralization. Um, so Cardano seems to have a really nice trade-off between uh, being able to run smart contracts quite cheaply while also being decentralized, so not losing on security, because after all, blockchains are here <laughs> to bring decentralization. And the third reason um, we use Cardano, which is actually kind of the main one actually, is that um, we are providing the scholarships and bootcamps in Africa, and Cardano um, already partnered with some countries in Africa, especially Ethiopia, for delivering um, uh, certificates for, of uh, education. So that really makes our work easier, and we have sort of an interplay between these um, technologies. Well, I chose Cardano uh, mostly because of the low fees when it's uh, when it came uh, when it came into my mind to create music NFTs uh, or some digital tokens. It was yeah the low fees, and uh, then after some. Some of my releases, uh, releases the the community is what uh, inspired me, inspired my music, and um, the creative process. So that's why I continued and stayed. I I tried to sniff out other chains, but it it didn't have the same uh, the same sentiment that Cardano had. So um, I stayed and yeah, continue to do so now. Can I ask you a question? Because there are other chains that are cheap as well. Um, why Cardano rather than Polygon, for example? I haven't uh, prioritized uh, reading up to the tech. Um, I'm familiar with the tech on Cardano. And uh, as I said, the community, I know the people. I have the network for, uh, if anything, should happen, or if I need help with anything, I have the network around me to, yeah. So is the community the win? Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. For me as a creator, it's it's what makes me me as a music producer, as Nido. So yeah. So I mean, I got into the crypto space in 2017, which right before the bull run, and there were many. There was obviously Bitcoin, there was Ethereum, was gaining traction, but you had EOS, you had Tron, all these different ecosystems. What struck out for me in Cardano is, as you, were, as you were saying, the academic part. I mean, I'm not a cryptographer, I'm not, not a computer scientist. I don't know what's going on under the hood in Cardano. But having the um, sort of certainty that there is research done behind there, there is peer-reviewed research, that's sort of like the scientific method is a tool that we can use to understand the world around us without necessarily going there and doing the, the research and doing the, the, the experiments. So for me, that was probably the, the, the greatest uh, motivator that to start with. And then obviously learning about the community, meeting pe different people. I went to the Cardano Summit in 2021 in Berlin where I met amazing people that sort of just went on building my confidence in the ecosystem. And then I started creating content just to learn more about the ecosystem, which then allowed me to become a Cardano ambassador. So now I'm deep in the waters and I'm still looking around at different blockchains. There's Ergo is really interesting. Make, makes a lot of sense to have you know some sort of proof of work there. Um, Polygon, as as you know, as you were saying, it's it is a layer that you know works and it's fast. It has cheap fees, but still, I'm not technical enough to know if that will work in hundred years, right? With Cardano, you have these these sort of this this lay ground that creates a structure from the from the foundations. So, Patrick, I've got a challenging question for you. I mean, I'm going to be a bit of devil advocate today, but. Um, so you have been in the Cardano community for a long time. You like the research aspect, which is uh, probably quite unique of Cardano that has got a plan how the project is growing, where other projects don't have this uh, timeline of uh, tech development as well. There, there have been some critics about Cardano being always late to the party, right? Everybody was doing DeFi, everybody was doing NFT, and Cardano was a bit late. What would be your answer to that? I always looked at it as uh, the tortoise against the, the the hare. So you know, going slow, doing things um, with 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 the right intentions. I think the move fast, break things works for applications, for social media, for things that are invaluable. But when you have value going around, when you have identity, when you have things that if people lose money, they can you know lose their their life. I think it's important to go slow. And I mean, we can see it. I mean, I, I've been translating articles for a media um, journal and 
I've been translating so many articles in terms of hacks that were happening on Ethereum, on Polygon, all the yeah. different places. I want you to come to that point, but Cardano has never been hacked. Yeah. yeah. So that's. Why did I come to, uh, to um, uh, Cardano? Um, that guy at the back there, Andy, he's my uh, crypto advisor. My brother-in-law, um, and that was the, the original reason. He, he, he gave a pitch to me, told me that this is going to make you a lot of money and all that good stuff, and that was the first reason I got into it, um, which is when it was at the all-time high. Thanks. Um, yeah, um, but he, he gives me lots of advice. He tells me, tells me um, where we're, we're heading, and then I'd like to say it was because of um, Charles's whiteboard um, side of things, but I've only just recently just watched that, so I can't use that as my, my reasoning, so slap on the wrist there. Um, Originally came in for, for, for money, money reasons, um, stuck at it because I saw the, the value in the rewards. You were talking uh, before on the, on the SBO panel around the rewards and how, how much good can be done from those, those uh, rewards. And I saw an opportunity in, in, in using those rewards for veterans. So, so my NFT project is around um, supporting veterans and, and um, creating almost like a pool it's in itself so that we can give them to the likes of the Royal British Legion, which is one of the, the, the charities that we, we raise funds for. So I just saw that there was so much good in, in, in the way it's set up. The fact that you can, you can stake your ADA, you're going to get this, this free money that's kind of coming through to a certain degree, and you can use that to go and give it to, to a charity. Uh, and it's self-sustaining. You don't have to have the middleman, like you were saying before. There's no middlemen. There's no kind of uh, challenges in that. So it's, um, I just saw so much good in that. And then, obviously, and you were just saying a minute ago, around the, the community, the community in Cardano is, is, is exceptional. You only have to speak to anybody on, on Twitter that's part of the Cardano community, and they're more than willing to help out. Niles Codes, codes if anyone knows who he is, he was the very first one to help me in regards to doing giveaways and finding out how I can find out who's got my NFTs so that I can give um, good giveaways to. So he jumped on board. Um, Pete, uh, who does his own um, YouTube channel, he, he reached out to me and I've had conversations with him. So yeah, I think community is the thing that's kept me there. And, I, and, no, and for no reason, I, I, I have no interest in looking anywhere else. Just stick at Cardano. It's third generation. We know it's going to be a good thing in the future. Well, first thing, not everything in life is planned. So <laughs> I'm not a Cardano maxi and I was not born into Cardano. I probably uh, too old for this. Uh, <clears throat> but when it was COVID, I was building my um, cyber projects. And then at the reopening, there was this um, uh, Cardano summit I went to. But just, just before this, during COVID, I was starting to get interest into uh, crypto. And I did not enter by the biggest door. Uh, there were some very underground projects. Like I think they are still underground today. One project was called Verus. I don't know if any, even one guy here has heard about Verus. Uh, but top guys, uh, top, top guys, small project. And I spent nearly a year uh, building with them which made me learn a lot about blockchains and everything. And then I started to drift away from it and, and look into other blockchains. So I spent some time on Solana, I spent some time on Cosmos, on uh, uh, an identity uh, blockchain that I don't even remember today. Uh, but basically, I spent quite a lot of time on many other blockchains doing prototypes. And then reopening Cardano, uh, and I went to the summit. And I heard for the first time that there was a grant, possible grant, so within a few days. <laughs> so I applied for the grant uh, very briefly, quickly, and uh, not believing one moment that I would get anything. And I got the grant. Yeah. And then I was forced to build on Cardano. Like, <laughs> you know, now you have to deliver. So, so I started to, to look into it, and because um, I had to deliver what I pitched. And, and I'm going to be very honest with you, the first few, I mean, it's a very small grant, but the first few ADA I received, the day after I converted them. Just don't want them. I mean, I don't know what is Cardano. I'm going to build on it, but I don't want, I mean, okay. So I moved, the, I moved the, the ADA away. And then I started to build, and I started to realize, yeah, it's probably not so bad. <laughs> I got hacked on Solana. I clicked on an NFT in my wallet, and my wallet got emptied. Never happened on Cardano. 
And I started to spend more time on trying to, I mean, okay, build my project, deliver my project. But again, remember, I'm coming from some kind of background of a s cyber and hacking. So, okay, let's hack it and try to see what, what's, what's going in there. And I found it very difficult to hack Cardano. And then I did not sell one more other. <laughs> I kept them all. And I even started to buy more other with my own money because I started to believe in it completely. The more you build on it, the more you can believe in it. And I'm going to go back to one point here. There's this uh, website called DeFi Llama where you can find all the hacks since the beginning of time nearly. Like you can go back to like, yeah, eight years, nine years, I don't know. You can look at all these hacks. There are probably 250 hacks out there. Most of them are for more than $1 million. A lot of them are for more than $10 million, multiples of $10 million. I mean, we're talking like, I don't know, several hundred million dollars, probably a billion. I did not do the count. Not one hack on Cardano. Not one single hack on Cardano. Hopefully it continues like this. Thank you so much. You brought up two very important points. Um, one, I mean, the, the hacking point that we, we mentioned before, I lost 50 grand in a project on Polygon. I was working with it, they got the token, and then at some point, oh, got lost. So then what you do? You work for free for like a year, and uh, that's not nice. So I think that's, uh, that's a big point. Um, the other aspect that I really like that you brought it up is the grant, because there are no other blockchain that has got something like Catalyst. Project Catalyst is so valuable, has deployed millions and millions of dollars to start up, to project, to build. And I think that is um, a big part of the Cardano community that is not enough um, uh, promoted, I say. They don't talk much and uh, I think that's wrong. I think we should promote more. Uh, we should say more about the grant and uh, all these uh, funding opportunities. Now, let's go back to the community because I want to um, talk more about that and what support you get as creator, right? I had the opportunity to work with IUHK for over a year. I was working closely to Charles and, and uh, another executive and, I mean, even the community within IUHK, within Cardano, is really great. The support that you get. Everybody knows each other. You need something, they know, we introduce it to you. And they keep doing it. They keep doing it forever. You make really some um, good friends and some really bad relationships. So in, when we talk about creators, what is the support? Support that you can get from the Cardano community that can help, for example, with your music project. So that helps you to kind of like bootstrap the project. That's, that's what I would like to understand a, bit, a little bit. We, we can start with you maybe. The community enables me to, well, I mint some digital collectibles. Um, and people support me. Uh, and by that I can... Um, take some days of work or take some of my day work and I can focus on my music and they inspire me I get inspired by community members I made a lot of music like sort of community music um, by members like Cardano Whale uh, when he left the third time I think second <laughs> or third time I made um, I made a song when he came back like sort of tribute to him and uh, he saw it and retweeted it and shared it and that is what and I got a lot of positive feedback and as a creator the positive feedback is the the first driver of continue to create because my initial uh, venture as an electronic artist was on Spotify like one or two songs on Spotify but you're there in the dark there's no one to give you feedback no one to tell you anything um, but the community, the Cardano community, is, I constantly get feedback and that yeah, drives me and inspires me to, to continue to create. And not only the feedback, but yeah, it supports with Mints as well because yeah, it's time. Yeah, I think feedback is so important. Patrick, tell us what is the most interesting person that you have interviewed in the Cardano community? Oh man. <laughs> 
Um, I mean, I have my favorites, obviously, because I, as you know, when NFTs launched on Cardano, I was all over them. I, I saw what was happening on Ethereum. I was like, okay, maybe there's a moment in Cardano. And I started my interviews first interviewing SPOs because I just wanted to learn more about how they operate the stake pools and um, seeing th their side of the story. Maybe in the future, I'll open my stake pools. I was curious about that. And down the road, I started also interviewing DeFi projects and NFT projects. And I think there's some, um, I really like, I have also the t-shirt of Ada Ninjas. They rebranded to Danketsu. And I think Zushan and um, Tommy, they're a, amazing team. They recently became that. So you see that they're building something not only for themselves and for the community, but also for, for, for a future generation. And I think they've been really interesting to, to, to interview because they, for example, there was a period, I think last year, where there were a lot of floods in Pakistan and Zushan with a few other community members, they created an NFT to sell, to gather money to help people in Pakistan. And I think this is very Valuable. I mean, I love it that the Cardano community, whenever there's something happening, or there were, I think two years ago, I think floods in Germany and someone created some NFTs to, to send us donations. And the fact, I'm more keen on sending donations through this format rather than others because here I'm, I'm, I'm interacting with these people. I know I can trust them because we, we have similar values, we share them. So I think it's that, as you said, I, I interview NFTs and DeFi projects, they're theoretically in competition because, you know, our attention is what they're after and, you know, we have a limited amount of attention. But even there, you still have people resharing and retweeting of other projects. And I think that's, that's something amazing. So, but um, I would like you to tell maybe us more about empowering uh, um, the Unbank or the third world country where there is no education and... Uh, and um, how, tell us a bit about your passion of working with these people, because it's also about community, you know, it's giving tools to people they don't. And I think sometimes when we talk about crypto, we talk about blockchain, it's all, always people already with money, they are making money, right? So it's like uh, uh, not much attention to, I mean, you mentioned Pakistan, uh, and, uh, and there is a lot of work that Cardano has been doing in Africa. We saw a video before, um, and... I think that is something that sometimes could be maybe more valuable use of technology. Um, yes, so on that point, actually, there is a, uh, on our website, uh, directed.dev, there is a, or actually, it's easier to find on our Twitter, which is directed uh, to Lobin Foundation. Uh, there's an interview with one of our students who uh, gave a really, I would say, emotional testimony how the foundation really changed her life. Um, so, to be fair, we are partnered with uh, the best schools in Ethiopia and Kenya, but it still means that the kids have like barely access to the internet, and usually their phones they have is like their parents' phone. So the best school doesn't mean they have MacBooks, right? <laughs> and one terabyte downloads or something. <laughs> so um, the kids are kids, students, they're high school graduates. Uh, they're extremely passionate and they're extremely driven to build something for the community. Uh, or for everyone around. One of the uh, students, um, he actually was borrowing his, uh, the one, we finished the bootcamp uh, just under a month ago, and uh, one of the graduates, um, he would every single day borrow a phone from his mom, walk for about 30 minutes to the nearest uh, internet hotspot, work for all day, and I mean all day, uh, for three months. And at the end of the uh, bootcamp, he graduated obviously like really well. Uh, he built a project for, um, it's, it's for uh, voting or like it's, like, it's for seeing what um, uh, like legislation changes or uh, government changes in the area are happening and you can vote in your opinion on that. Uh, and he built that for the community, right? So you can see how people just really want to build products. They just don't have the means to do it. So we are really, providing them the technology and the resources so they can actually empower the community um, using Cardano, right? So, um, and uh, some of the companies with which, with which we are partnered with um, for the internships after the bootcamp um, are web-free companies. So they can continue building in web-free and expanding the ecosystem. And they do want to build. It's like they are so passionate. Uh, it's really beautiful to see that. I think yes, there is no price to see the happiness in front of like next generation and uh, see they are actually building something that 
has got a real use case and is solving a problem. Now, Barney, I'm going to ask you something a bit that I'm interested in into this because we talk about the grants and at the beginning you introduce yourself, oh, I'm going to make lots of money here. <laughs> but uh, how easy or difficult or challenging is building on Cardano from a um, uh, monetization perspective. So if you have an NFT project, you need to sell your NFT. So you need, you know, to sell them at a good price. You might get some grants to kick off, but then you need more investment. So tell us a bit about the money side the, to develop a project. How, what's your experience? So I've been a bit stubborn, if I'm being honest. I haven't, I haven't tried to go on to Catalyst and, and get a grant or anything like that. And I think it's because I want it to... I want to do it naturally. I want to do it so it's organic and it, and it happens through building the community, which is what we've been doing over the past year, year and a half. Um, it's not massive. I mean, the, the NF, the, on my NFT project, we've got 250 people on our Discord, so it's not huge, but everyone's come to that Discord because they want to be there to, to support and do the right thing uh, around veterans and things like that. We have quite a few veterans that are on there. Um, of those 250, there's probably only about six bots, so it's not too bad. We're doing, we're doing, all, we're doing all right. <laughs> It, it's hard, but I'm very lucky, right? In the sense that I am one guy who has a hobby at the moment. That's what this is. That this is to me. It's a hobby that I'm quite, quite passionate about. I can do something very, very good in regards to the charity work that I'm doing, and obviously being an ex forces kind of guy, I, I really want to want to help out as much as I possibly can. So there's there's that. We were talking before. I think I was talking with the, the guys from Pavia. I can pivot at any point because I am just one guy that's dealing with it. So the pressure isn't there. We're in the bear market, so you like fee, you were saying about fees and then everything else. It's, it's all very low, so there's no there's no real major risk to me at the moment. So I'm, I'm in a, a place of being able to build and just do the thing that I love, right? Which is designing things through NFTs and then hopefully get this game into a good space. At the moment, I'm developing that. Um, so I'm not too sure if that answered your question. I went on a bit of a ramble there, didn't I? Um. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I'm going to ask you a slightly different. Building a game uh, is hard. It takes it takes years, right? because you need to create game dynamics that make keep actually the game fun. So maybe tell us something about the, your game that can- that makes it fun. Can, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like Top Trumps. I think that's, that, it's, it's a bit like, uh, in fact, someone said it before, it's a bit like uh, Pokemon cards. Okay. So they get the, the idea behind the game is it's got, the, the cards are NFTs, yep. they've got attributes, and you can play against each other in regards to those attributes, so you can challenge each other. Um, I remember being videoed by, by um, Dave on the last Cardano Summit and, and I said I wanted to create something that was like a top trump game whereby um, I could challenge you to an NFT. So you wanted to, you had an NFT that you didn't like maybe or you did like but you, you want to wave it in front of someone to get another NFT and we can sign a contract and then we play the game against each other and whoever wins gets both, both cards kind of in their wallet. So that's the, the aim in regards to being on-chain. But it's evolved a little bit since that because I actually think that there's a there's a game here in regards to um, helping uh, other other uh, NFT projects with giveaways. So you could almost do like a tournament, and then there could be a giveaway at the end for their own individual cards. Uh, and also, I'm ho I'm hoping to build a platform whereby we can help other NFT projects build their own battle cards, yeah. so that it, it, that it becomes not just about lad swag and, and that it becomes about other NFT with projects. An SDK become an engine. Uh, what? With an S, I mean, becoming like more as an engine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you, so people can build on it, and then they they can use the game for their own their own benefits, not just for a lad swag benefit. Yeah, interesting. But it's it, it's certainly not easy, and at the moment, I'm just doing the the demo side of things, and I am looking for a, a developer to help me build the game in in, in kind of future. Eric, AI, what's the deal with the Cardano and AI? And also minting. You're, you're so, going so into a... Uh, so focus on uh, yeah. the user experience because that's where I wanted to get. And AI is a great tools, uh, can help a lot. But when it comes down to minting, and we, we are talking here about uh, being, you know, talking about the community, about trying to onboard as, much peop as many people as possible so the user experience become a priority especially from you know, a developer's perspective. Yeah, I'd probably give you more of a developer perspective than an end user one, but maybe it's what you want. <laughs> um, on the minting side, when I started this project, so here we're talking about the first project, the first grant, because I had a, at least one of a grant later on a Cardano for another project. But for this first project, um, it was the very beginning of the NFTs on Cardano and to, to 
to develop it. Uh, at the beginning, I was thinking oh, I, I had to develop everything. And finally, I, I found that um, there was a, some guys in, in Argentina uh, doing this, and I, they helped me, and I built on, the, on their, on their uh, let's say, uh, NFT platform. But then the topic of AI, so my first project was basically uh, using AI to generate uh, still pictures of yourself, uh, profile pictures, but kind of morphed, and then to mint them. It was surprising to see there was an appetite for it, because for me, like, you know, who wanted to see this at the time? I'm not, I was not too sure. But uh, there was quite some appetite for it. The AI part took me, uh, I think I pitched something like I would do it in two weeks. It took me like three months. Uh, and I've not stopped building AI since, so it's now two years. Uh, I've built like more and more and more projects on AI. Uh, not necessarily still with Cardano, because within Cardano, within the, eco the ecosystem of Cardano, you probably have heard of a Singularity Net, uh, deep funding. They have also some kind of funding mechanism. So I've applied on deep funding, and I won a grant or so on deep funding, and I've delivered AIs based on deep funding as well. So uh, yeah, it's an ongoing journey. I think I'm going to conclude with uh, uh, a side away. Uh, but I got, and, and I will link it with the, um, the community here. Uh, I got the chance to, to, because my second project was about identity. Uh, on Cardano, and then it led me to uh, meet the guys of Atala Prism, which are absolutely great people, really, really great. But I'm just going to cut it short. But after, um, let's say, an onboarding of a court for a few weeks, then they started to ask uh, everybody, do you want to pitch your project, next project? And I was thinking, um, it's too early for me, I don't have the time. But there were like 25 of us, they were pitching their project. And I was, okay, I'm going to pitch then. <laughs> and I started to pitch a project, and then I got selected, and then, and this is a good thing, uh, you know, about this kind of um, community. But here I'm talking more about the internal IOG community, uh, because you start to pitch a project, and then you get recognized, and then they put you in the top five, and then they ask you to pitch to another group, and then you put you in the top three. And I ended up pitching to Charles. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> totally incredible. And, and I pitched the identity project, but I, to show him the identity project, I, show it, I showed my AI project. And I said, this is how you log into AI. And his remark was, uh, uh, this is very smart to mix identity with AI because this is the future. And this is what I believe. The future is, uh, okay, led a lot by AI, but... Uh, my view is that the identity on crypto, if you, if you don't have identity, you have nothing. And everything starts with identity. If you want to put AI on crypto, you need to put identity on AI as well. And, and this is basically back to my kind of projects. It's like uh, identity, authentication, identity, but AI on top. So I don't know if I answer your questions, but no, it's, no, it's a round circle, but it's, uh, it's, it's the way it's I see it. It's a brilliant point. And uh, before, before we get also some thoughts from the other panelists, I just want to make a note because you mentioned about pitching to Charles. And I remember Charles telling me something like, you are going to succeed if you, you never give up and you are resilient. I think that's the, the, really the key. If you are resilient and you keep doing what you like, eventually you're going to get there. And, you know, it's tough, but, you know, it's also the journey that is exciting. Now, identity. Um, I, I work with Tony, and uh, I think, yeah, it's brilliant. And, and Cardano was one of the, I think it was probably the, the first project to start yeah. in a part of a city. No, no, the, to, Atala to Prism. A, exactly. Atala Prism, when I saw them for the first time, it was a long time ago, like four years ago, yeah. I thought, they cracked it. They cracked yeah. it. Nobody else will come close. And then, for two years, nothing happened. I think... And, yeah. and, and now they are back at it. Yeah. But, like, there was a bit of a... Okay, yeah. we talk about, you know, sometimes it takes some time. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it, ta it takes time. And, and I think everybody was excited on having product ready to go when... Uh, 
the approach of Cardano is not to bring something out and then test it and then change it. It's more about making sure that whatever get out uh, is bulletproof and it doesn't it doesn't go down. Uh, so probably that was a bit the challenge. The commercial team was a bit too uh, positive to get you know uh, into commercialization early than uh, um, expected. But any case, identity Cardano was basically the first blockchain to focus on that. And uh, now we have seen different projects, talking about soul bound token and all these other things that um, maybe will never work. But identity is very important for creators. I mean, uh, um, Nido, for your music project is, is super important because you, know, you are a creator, you are a musician, you are a designer, you are a... Um, you know, even a YouTuber, you know, whatever. The, you know, your identity is super important. And sometimes when it comes down to NFTs, we can get scam. I mean, I remember talking um, with, uh, with the guy at JPEG store, uh, and he was saying that how many NFT projects, you know, they go there, they make money, and then, and then they disappear. It's very important to reward the creator and make sure their identity is protected as well. So let's, let's do a round and let's talk a little bit about how identity is important and, uh, you know, perhaps what else uh, Atala Prism can do to support the project, what else Cardano can do to implement these identity tools to combat fakes and to protect creators. Yeah, um, I can't talk too much about Total Prism, but I can. Um, I see identity as two things for myself as a creator and artist. It's uh, when I first started. Um, I started uh, mostly in the Pavia community, and my music there. Um, it ended up with uh, Nita from Pavia. That was my identity at the, at the beginning, and then. It's uh, like like I said earlier. I get inspiration from community members. I get inspiration from projects that I stick on to and yeah, make music of. And that uh, it sort of came because I wanted to stay anonymous at the start. But um, eventually, jumping around, changing profile pictures, <laughs> uh, Clay, <No. laughs> uh, I figured out that I. I should show my true identity, like myself, because I'm I'm building a brand. So I wanted people to recognize me and to see me, like I, I can be both. I can be both uh, a PFP Nido, that's uh, uh, with the identity to a project, and I can be me to represent my music on Web two or yeah. Uh, that's one of the sides. Uh, and then I also used IMX, uh, IAMX, and Endmaker to attach identity on my, uh, on my some of my releases, so uh, so people can verify my identity when you mint some of my stuff, because that as well when people can just yeah we've seen that with people getting scammed uh, on Discord all the time, someone get hacked and then on NFT projects, and then you just, oh, there's a flash sale, and then, yeah, you have no idea how to verify if that's them, because they're, yeah, taking someone else's moderator or something, identity, and then you lose money. So that's the second part, to verify your identity, like, yeah, in the real world. Thank you for mentioning IMX. <laughs> they, they are doing some really cool stuff. Yeah, they are. Right now. Yeah. So... Yeah, they are great people. Yeah. Okay, Patrick, what would you say about identity? Mm, I recently interviewed IMX, so so that was that was interesting, and um, I think definitely we need a system where, you know, down the road, wherever you want to log in somewhere, now you have login with Facebook, login with Gmail. It would be nice to have something where you can sign your 
your, your wallet with your transaction, with your ID, and uh, log in that way. But the, the downside for now, at least with Cardano, is that it's all transparent. If someone knows my ADA handle or, or my, you know, my ID somehow, they can go and pull PM on an explorer and see the contents of my wallet. So I think we do need a layer. I hope it will come with something like Midnight or you know, there are different privacy solutions where you can have your public wallet where you display your gallery, your, you know, your PFP, but obviously you then want to have a layer where you know, no one's looking in your bank account besides the bank, but for example, you want your privacy with your, most of your funds, let's say. So I think, I'm not sure if there's you know, talks about this, I'm, you know, I'm hopeful, yeah, definitely, because you know, if you have a f fully transparent, in an ideal world, that would be amazing, but unfortunately we live in a world where people take advantage of that and you know, if they see you or have a lot of money, a lot of NFTs are worth a lot, they can do something to you and you know, that's, that's not nice. But I think even when you, talk, when you think about application in finance, perhaps, right, there is a lot of elements about privacy that people don't want to show. Uh, that's where blockchain uh, is challenging there. And then um, I remember having discussion with the fashion brands for IHK, and even then, they don't want to have full transparency because of their clients. So there are elements of transparency that, um, that they're problematic. So definitely privacy is something that hopefully will be implemented with midnight. But uh, it's quite interesting to see like uh, having another layer, an identity layer at the top of your wallet. So your wallet is not your identity, you actually have got another, another identity layer and then you, that's where no, you do your transaction. So that, that's quite interesting, but I think there is a lot of uh, discussion still and uh, uh, see how we can really make it work. Um, Bunny, identity. I mean, working with veterans, uh, there is a lot about identity, personal experience that maybe you want to include within uh, an NFT, within your project? I think identity is massively important um, because of all of the, 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 I suppose, the rugs and things out there and, 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 and the like. So I think I was very clear right from the beginning of, of doxing myself and making sure that everyone knew who I was and what I'm doing and how I'm presenting my kind of project and things because I didn't want to think it'd be very easy to think that, wait a minute, this guy's saying he's doing it for veterans, he's, he's raising funds, but actually you need to prove that and prove that it's going somewhere. And I could have been anybody doing that. And, and everyone straight away will be thinking that. And I was very conscious of that. Um, so I, I, I dox myself uh, very early. There is a nervousness around doing that as well, though. So if for, for someone who works in the financial industry, having to say that you're on uh, a blockchain or you're in, into crypto is seen as a bit of a, what do you mean you're into, into crypto? You know, the fiat world's the, definitely the way, the way that you should be going and why would you go, go over there? So it's, it's, there's a nervousness about bringing yourself out into the open to say that you do, you know, you are part of um, crypto and, and enjoy it. And, I, and when I'm at work in the real world and I speak about it, I, you get a lot of people thinking that I'm absolutely mad, but we'll soon show them, eh? Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I, think, I think making sure that your identity is out there, like you say, identity is everything. I think, I think it is. Um, I think it, it's not just that though. I think there is, a, there's a, especially in the NFT world, we need to evolve it a bit more in regards to having our, almost like our own industry standards. So like an ISO 9001 or whatever it may be, but doing it for NFTs. So yes, you've got to dox yourself and make sure your identity is very, very clear, but there is so much more to do in regards to a project. Cause I could still rug tomorrow if I really wanted to. You don't know what my project's doing and, 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 and that's not really kind of signed off or, or certified. And I think there's, there's, some, there's something in that. I think there needs to be some sort of cert certificate that you go for to kind of give people a bit more confidence that, that you, you mean well and you're doing the right things. There is so much good that really blockchain can bring to the space, but sometimes when we use the word crypto, we just get the wrong feedback. I mean, I see that every day um, in financial market is just, um, it's just, it's just bad. And then, uh, you know, just the bad things, they, they, they're being picked up. Uh, recently I've run some, I tried to run some Google ads for, um, blockchain project and I use the word crypto and digital assets and almost my YouTube channel was <laughs> take it down. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I had to, yeah, we save it, but because we use the word crypto and digital assets, uh, uh, and then the, there is all these new um, financial promotion things, uh, 
the, we need to be careful even how we do marketing. I think that's very important even for the guys that they presented before. Um, in the UK, it's going to be tough. So you need to make sure that you, know, you, you are able still to communicate your project, but just be careful the way you promote it. Um, so read all these you know, things they, they say. Um, now, but you haven't talked much about identity. And you know, when, you, when we think about project, I mean, in Africa, lots of people have got no identity. And that's really an opportunity to bring these, these people from emerging market, give them identity, give them the tools to participate in financial market, in you know, the new creator economy. Uh, how important is identity for those people and how Cardano Tech is uh, onboarding them? Well, not at all yet. <laughs> like we are in a very much in a startup phase. Um, we just launched the first bootcamp. But um, you can very much imagine a system where um, every uh, scholar has a soulbound NFT uh, showing that they um, not just did the bootcamp, but also did the project or did an internship, right? And this way they can build their sort of like digital resume. To answer the question is like, yeah, we are not using any of the digital identity credential proving systems um, because we're focusing on like the more important aspects um, right now. But generally speaking, uh, there's a very big potential for designing a system where, um, yeah, each wallet essentially has like soulbound credentials, which they can prove in also a very secure and privacy preserving manner, right? You can prove with zero knowledge proofs that I own a certain credential without revealing my whole history of transactions or things like this. Um, so generally speaking, uh, this is something that we'll be very excited to expand into, uh, but it's not something we are involved in yet. I want to come back to the point about AI because AI is a tool that for uh, creators could be quite valuable. I mean, it can't, I, I think that really AI can't take the job of a creator because you still need the, creati the creativity which is led by by human, I mean, We're going to disagree. originality, <laughs> uh, your twist, let's call it that way. But, but, but l l let's discuss a little bit about AI. I don't want just to have Eric view, I also want your view because, you know, in, in, in the creator space, in the creator economy, AI is going to be just one of the tools that you are going to be using, right? So Mary, maybe Eric, you lead this. Yeah. Um, Let just give me 30 seconds on identity to, to wrap it up, but uh, yeah, yeah. just because I heard a few things. Um, you said, you mentioned sign-in with Facebook and sign-in with Wallet maybe doesn't exist. So sign-in with Wallet, does, it does exist. Uh, I delivered it as part of uh, Fund8 for Cardano. And it's signing with Cardano identity, but also, uh, oh, wallet itself, uh, but it's multi-chain, multi-wallet, so uh, ETH, uh, Cosmos, Solana, etc. So that's one. Now, the, s the second project to build on top of it was to use digital identity and verified credentials instead of your wallet, and this is going to your point, because then, at the moment, if you sign with your wallet, you're going to be pseudo-anonymous, but not really anonymous, because we see your public uh, key, um, so we see all your transactions. Uh, but the idea would be then to sign in with a digital identity and provide verified credentials that you choose yourself so that you hide what you want to hide and you give what you want to give. Uh, this was part of a project as well. And, and just to wrap up on this, because I heard uh, about the um, DeFi, want it or not, we're going to go towards regulated DeFi. So this uh, identity for DeFi is extremely important. It's extremely important to Cardano and to other kind of blockchains as well. Um, we cannot decouple it. So long as crypto makes DeFi without a KYC, they're going to be seen as, as you say, oh, you're doing crypto, you're on the dark side. But when you start to come to mix a KYC with digital identity, with DeFi, with full traceability and full capability, then you're back into the normal world of transactions. So I'm going to wrap it up here. I don't want to go too much further. But, but how do we get that implemented? Because I get you. But yeah, but it, it's possible. 
I mean, I don't want to go back on to, oh, I mean, maybe I'll, I'll have a little bit of a rant later on <laughs> on a project that I uh, proposed to Cardano, which was this one, basically to build a digital identity via wallet and digital wallet and to execute Marlowe transaction via your digital identity based on verified credentials. And this was the project. Okay. We so we're just going to have a challenge to talk to the old world and tell them to implement this model. So I think we need a champions to prove that that is better well, than the current model. So we uh, need them to listen. You, you don't enough. necessarily need to be better, but you need to at least adopt they're going to force you. They're going to, f to, to force you to do KYC. Otherwise, they will see it as rogue transactions. So, so we need to build the tools to prove that we can do proper KYC transaction, properly uh, a verified transaction. Not, not blockchain verified, but like financially uh, you know, proven. Um, yeah, go back to AI. <laughs> okay. If you see AI as a one entity, like a chat GPT or a stable diffusion or one thing like this, uh, you see it as a, uh, even if it's fully capable of doing many things, you fully see it as one entity and you think, it cannot think more than me. It cannot be better than me, okay? But when you start to chain AIs, when you start to project yourself in a world where AIs can be masters of other AIs. You can have slave AIs working for you, and as an AI, you can direct things. And why would an AI not have what you call creativity? Creativity, you know, you... you when, okay, our brain is a computer. Okay? Now, our computer is made not of silicon, but of... Uh, uh, ca ca no, carbon, carbon, it's neurons, neurons, zero, it's not zero or one, it's like 0, 0.0 something, one, 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 two, two, three, but it's still a computer. So at some point, you have a silicon computer who is going to emulate a carbon computer, and that's it. So uh, I, I was discussing with uh, Luca earlier, and uh, I was telling him, you know, there was a world before internet, and the world after internet. And the world after internet, you cannot go back. You cannot go back to the world before internet. That's it, it's here. It's the same with the mobile phone. You had a, a world with a, before mobility, before mobile, and, and after mobile, and you cannot go back. And we are just entering into the world with AI, so let's call it after, after AI soon, and we will not be able to go back. So we have to live with these AIs. And we have to accept what all of these AIs can do for us. And we have to, 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 to make the, the best of this. And, and it would be foolish today to think that uh, AIs, they just do what they do today. And in five years, they, they, they OK, you know, like, they're going to evolve. but. Again, the genie is out of the box. You can, cannot put it back in the box. So you have to live with it. And you'll have to live with it with exponential uh, improvement. Ugh. You know, there's just been a, a government AI summit <laughs> talking about the risk of AI. Uh, well, l let's stick to creativity and see how AI you think could help or you would like to help uh, perhaps what you are building. I certainly think AI can create some very wonderful and lovely things, which it has done. And people have seen that. Um, um, people send it out and they create their NFTs and stuff. But I, I don't believe that, that, that AI has that, that full personality yet. It's still quite young in, in regards to its development as humans are, right? So we've got love and we've got passion. And we've got all these other things that you can build into it. I don't think AI can do that. I've tried to, I've tried to use AI to create some of the watercolors that I've created. And, and when I create those watercolors, when they're, they're ex-soldiers or veterans, there's personality in that. I'm taking individual photos and I'm putting as much love as I can and, and personal experience of being an ex-soldier into creating that, that watercolor. I don't think AI can create that. That's not to say that I don't like AI. I think AI is, is more of a it's more of a co-pilot. It helps you do lots of different things. And, and in your NFT projects, it helps me um, certainly excel in certain things. You'll see there's one 
with like a war face of a, um, a guy screaming and I couldn't create that myself um, through drawing and I used AI to help me create part of that face and then uh, amended it and changed it slightly. So I do think AI is a good thing, you can use it as a co-pilot, but I don't think it will completely supersede the creativity and the love and the passion that you can build in, into your art. So I'd say if we... Do you use AI first? I do, I do. I, the interviews, I, they're written interviews. They are written by you. No, no. <laughs> the interviews, they're written by the community that's re re replying to questions. But then what I do usually is I have the full interview on my Medium page and then I sort of use the AI to create a Twitter thread. And it's phenomenal because it knows the characters for each tweet. It goes one slash five and stuff like that. So that's, that's, that's really helpful. In terms of image generation, I mean, I, I just bought a, an album from Nido and the image is stunning and it's, you know, it has that so, sort of synthwave vibe. So even there you have creators that, for example, are using music. They also want to create, you know, the art for their music. I see, as a tool, I see it as a tool as well. Um, I'm very interested in how AI will emerge when it will sort of reach that level of, of consciousness where you can interact with it. And I really hope it can sort of like, I, I think we should lead by example and treat you know, those that are below us as we would want to be treated. I hope AI is not speciesist, for example. It doesn't say, okay, you're a different species, I can do whatever I want to you. I hope it recognizes that we are you know, living beings that want to you know, have an experience of life. So I'm a bit, sort of worried about that part because at this point we're not really treating well other species, right? So I hope that changes and we can lead by example. Um, AI as a tool, it's amazing. I've been using it and I think, you know, a lot of artists are, probably Nido can say some, something more. Yeah, I use uh, AI for the artwork of my album releases. Um, before I used uh, or commissioned artists to do it for me. Uh, so I used all the funds from Mint to fund the art for the next song or the album uh, but I had like nothing left uh, so now I use AI um, to further uh, like yeah, mid journey to further my vision for for the art so I, I get more control over what I can express creativity like visual that uh, that accompanies the music of my releases um, I haven't tried um, or made anything music with AI yet. I think it still sounds really bad. Uh, <laughs> and in the future, maybe it sounds better. Uh, but as, as you say, you can't take the human aspect out of music, I think, because there needs to be uh, some emotions or intention behind, behind the notes or, yeah. But it's a tool. I love to use it. And uh, yeah, we'll see in the future. I think that until we reach um, sort of like exponential self improvement of AI systems, which was, well, hard to say what's going to happen past that, but um, we're going to see humanity being empowered in like almost every single way. Uh, we can see it. Like we, people even say, like, we had industrial revolution, which automated a lot of manual labor. Now we're going through intellectual revolution when a lot of intellectual mundane labor is being automated. Uh, the sort of human input is being decreased, right? Um, we only, like when it comes to our generation, right? It's like we only need sort of a seed, right? A little bit of a prompt and the, art, the rest uh, is automated. Um, so we are probably going to see big empowerment from AI for humanity um, until like we reach a level where <laughs> so I can quickly add I've been working in AI safety field for about two three years um, and actually the, yeah the global summit for AI safety is actually a really good thing to see because um, every single expert or majority of experts believes that there's a pretty, success, pretty substantial existential risk when it comes to developing uh, strong artificial systems but until then we definitely gonna see a lot of empowerment hopefully also when it comes to developing safer, like safe development solutions for AI, right? So we could use AI for making AI safe. Um, but perhaps also that's where we need blockchain to verify the data they are so trained by the, um, you know, the... Th there's the actually US. a surprising amount of potential for using blockchain um, to uh, govern uh, artificial uh, intelligence systems, especially when it gets more, like, more powerful than average human. 
Okay, listen, this is such an interesting topic. We could have gone on for uh, hours, but thank you so much for sharing uh, all your work, all your experience, all your insights, all, uh, um, you know, all the beautiful Cardano community. And thank you everyone for being here. Thank you. A big applause. Thank you.